idea into kind of a detective story or a story of a murder. So what if the narrator is a murderer? That's immediately what I thought about. It's just such a fascinating way. So yeah, I can't think of an example, but it just sounds like such a great premise. Uh, uh, sorry? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, tell me, Sha, that I'm slotting to come and talk at around 20 past two. Yeah, about 10 minutes. Initially, what I was working on was a whole novel. Yeah. But then I decided to write like a much flashier spin of in order to work on the workshop. So the narrator, for the first, uh, for the first book, a series, the narrator is not seen, but uh, we meet him as a character in the second book. Okay. Yeah. From the first book. Uh, he, he views the world and uh, his own opinion of everything as how he thought it was. But uh, through dialogue and everything, at the end of the first book, he realizes that everything he thought that it was, it's not how it was. Because uh, these other people had different opinions and emotions and how their life was going on. Now that's when, from the second book, as he, he comes out, we know it's, it's, it's him who is narrating the story. He gets to understand the world better. Like yeah. Now accepting and, uh, um, like the general idea of the okay. Okay. No thanks for that, too, dear. Uh, I think you had a question, and then. Oh, it's just um, an example. Um, there's a musical called Into the Woods, so it's not a book, um, but it's kind of very mentor. It's all these different fairy stories imagined together, and then at the end of the first act or the beginning of the second, all the people in the fairy stories get really pissed off with the narrator pulling down and killing. Yeah. And then you're just left like lost. Because yeah. you're used to the narrator being there, but you might enjoy that. It's very matter. Yeah. There's a collection I remember that had the narrator. Be, so the, na the narrator always becomes a character in the succeeding story. Uh, and like that, and like that. And like, Were well, you next, I think? No, no. You had a story. You, you had to talk about your story. I think there are questions and comments. Daniela, go ahead. Yeah. Well, mine is just to kind of answer Yeah. Yeah. And then eventually, we kind of discovered who the narrator was, but I can't It's a guy who's supposed to be his friend, called Nick Carraway. Yeah. 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 So for anyone who's watched Jane the Virgin, um, same thing happened. The whole, um, the whole, what's it called, the whole show was narrated from season one to, I think, season six to the last season. Mm -hmm. Then on the very last episode, on the season finale, we realized who the narrator was, and it was so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Read the book. <laughs> great Guts, Great Guts, Pia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't want to talk about my story. Really, okay, okay. Uh, because uh, when I was going through the materials that was sent, I realized I've never been conscious about my point of view of the story. Yeah. And uh, I'm fascinated about yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, I want to learn more. And uh, I have two questions. Yeah. One is, uh, does the narrator have to be the one giving us his or her point of view in a story? Okay. And uh, two, uh, can we have multiple points of views in one story? Yes, to the second question. And that's what I was talking about when I was talking about the multivocal. Right? And there's a Smith story that everyone read for this class does that it gives different points of view so this happens all the time less in short stories more in novels because a short story is too short usually to kind of explore all those voices to their natural to their natural conclusions by definition that's what is a narrator well, that's what a narrator is they give their point of view so yes the narrator is a person telling giving the point of view Okay. Okay. Vera? I had a comment about um, when they were asking about uh, killing the, the narrator. Yeah. Um, there's also Desperate Housewives, where the person who's doing the narration is 
dead the whole time. And it's yeah. kind of a slight mystery what happened to her. Okay. And it gets explored at some point, but I thought I'd just mention that No, first. no, thanks so much, Vera. And it's a series, though. Yeah, <laughs> thanks but a lot. Might come from books. Thanks a lot. So my narrator is... Um, um, but my question... Yes. Go on. My question was... Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Vera. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> my question was... Um, so I had this story, which it starts off being a uh, third person. Yeah. Like some, it feels almost like um, kind of, not omniscient, but uh, a little further away from the person, yeah. as though you're watching them. And yeah. then it switches to uh, second person. Yeah. And then you have the person who was doing some of the watching, which implies that the narrator might be a third person. Would that be multivocal, even though it's the same narrator? No, it's just... You get that, what I mean? Yes. It's just a switching point of view. That's just a switching point of view. Multivocal involves... Even though it's the same narrator? Yes. Even if it's the same narrator. It's, you're just switching, diff, to, uh, you're switching points of view. But... Because multivocal okay. implies different voices. Almost different characters. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. No, f sorry, Florence, because we'd heard about your story and Misha is here, we might, you'll allow me not to. Yeah, yeah, please. So, just in summary, um, just very quick summary. The thing to think about is usually your narrators are very linked to us as people, right? And there's nothing wrong with that especially when we're kind of writing about objective narrators. There's nothing wrong with that. The most important thing is that your narrators are convincing. Because people always worry that what if, you, people seem to always get worried and taken up with the idea, what if people know it's me? That's not a big deal. As long as the kind of story is convincing, right? Right. Of course, you might have personal reasons for, for, for wanting for not wanting people to recognize the you in the story. But really what's important technically is that the narration is convincing, okay? So that's another thing to think about, about the narrator. Um, but narrators are important because narrators decide the story. So you've got to think about things like, what are the frames of reference? What's the agenda of the narrator? What's, what's their lexicon? What's their register? What's their vocabulary? These are the things that really help you like strengthen the narration, right? So at times you'll find that you're reading a story and the narrator's supposed to be a childhood narrator, but they're using very complex words. And that's why I was saying that it's very, very important for you to know your narrators as well as you know your characters, right? Um, and it's always good to think of your narrator as somebody who you're collaborating with to tell the story. Do not shy away from the fact that it's coming from you. Just think of it as a collaboration. So, so if you read a Billy Kahora story, it's not maybe Billy Kahora in a certain sense, but in a certain sense, it's still Billy Kahora, right? Um, I'm not going to go through the first person, second person, third person. You can read that up. That's pretty straightforward, okay? Um, I don't know if you covered this last week, but I, I just read it quickly last night. That yeah. story with the the um, the religious husband, and and then the switch of narrator at the end, or the reveal yeah. of the narrator. Is still, kind of, I'm still like, who was that? <laughs> is it yeah. the same husband, or is it a different person? But I thought that was really clever that switch right at the end. This is, you know, on Het or Heto Street. Yeah. yeah. In fact, that came up. Uh, much, much earlier. But I think Chinello tries to leave it vague, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. So it just messes around with you. But it works if that way, when it's, when, when it's left that way. We actually chatted quite a bit about that, yeah. Um, consistency is very important in point of view narration, right? And the reading that I gave you by Selgin talks about consistency, right? And it gives that really great example where you're kind of, you have a very inconsistent point of view. Somebody about Linda and her grandfather. You guys know what the reading I'm talking about? The POV reading, basically, by Peter Selgin. Um, well, 
I think Selgin says something that's quite interesting. That point of view is a mindset. If you think of it as a mindset, right, rather than a technical thing, that really, really helps. Uh, because it makes you more invested in, in the narration. I think I'll leave the discussion of redemption till next week, the story by Leslie Arima, okay? Okay. And I'll also share two writing exercises on point of view and setting that you can work on at home, okay? Cool. Shall we take five minutes, quick five minutes, and then we'll invite Mihail yourself to come and speak to us, yeah? Just a yes. Yeah. So when someone's kind of switching, you can follow it without feeling that the story is disrupted. Consistency is just a mistake. So it's at times you're kind of so furiously writing and you're writing naturally. Then the thing moves away from your narrator and somehow I just know it's you talking directly in the story. Yeah. 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 And if you read that Selgin reading, uh, there's a great example there that shows that inconsistency. So someone's switching from a very general way of narrating to, to into the character's head, then I think to a second character. And it's clear that that's just all over the place. Right? But there are times when you're doing it properly is when, first and foremost, I think you've got to denote it with change of paragraphs or change of sections. Yeah. Okay, so f quick five minutes. Oh, Florence, yes. Yes. Um, about the earlier question on the pigeon, the hospital and all that, why are the YouTube has a great playlist to having, you know, experts break down scenes like medical scenes and crime scenes? and what's realistic and what was played out for the drama and what will never happen in a hospital or the story can be. I think it gives an interest, like it can help you like figure out how to make what you're saying maybe like make it convincing and it's not realistic. Um, then the other one was about uh, and I'm mean, being aware of the narrator. It's an um, interesting work that I read a while back, and the whole premise was about a character within the webtoon who becomes aware that a character in a webtoon. And if the scene is not focused on the character, she's able to do whatever she wants, but if there's a scene on her, she has to act out and do everything the writer as per the scene, she can't act out outside the scene. And it's more about like, does she have, is she in charge of her own destiny or fate or her own story? But it brings in like this interesting, because you're not sure if the writer, the narrator, or the writer who's writing the story is aware that this character knows that the narrator exists. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's quite an interesting... And there is a, such a whole range of experimentation. Experimentation. You find some... I can't remember what book it is, but the writer names themselves mm. as a character and as a kind of narrator. And then they split themselves. So it's just playing around with the idea of you say me, Billy Kahora himself, then B Billy Kahora as a narrator, and then Billy Kahora as a character in the midst of this world. So there are a lot of experimentations around a lot of, yeah, so thanks for that, Florence. So let's take a quick five, and then I'll invite Misha to come and talk to us.